What's up, sports fans? It's Carl Charba back with another What the Health Minute. This time it's on the Laurel Leaf essential oil available uh, for a limited time. Uh, yeah, Laurel Leaf. Very interesting little uh, little plant here. The uh, Latin name, Laurus nobilis, is uh, you know another name for it. But you know the more common name for the Laurel Leaf is the Bay Leaf. That's right. It's that leftover little leaf in your stews and your soups that some person is always going to ask why you put in leaves in your stews and soups and uh the answer is well it's because it's a bay leaf it's got uh, it's got that 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 uh, traditional bay leaf taste well apparently it's also a laurel leaf so you can do all sorts of laurely things with it so let's get to the uh well i mean i'm not going to go into the cooking of the bay leaf uh because you know that's that's hours and hours of how many things you can make with a bay leaf but uh, let's talk about the fun stuff let's talk about the history and the the cultural significance and mythology so in ye olden times, in ancient Greece, the uh, the the bay leaf was laurel leaf was called the uh, Daphne, and it was named after a famous mountain nymph that uh, Apollo went after. Uh, Apollo had the hots for this mountain nymph named Daphne, and she was a priestess of Gaia. And so, before Apollo could get his, his grubby divine mitts on her, she uh, she prayed to Gaia. And there's, there's two different versions: either either she gets teleported to Crete, or she turns into a plant. But either way, the plant's called Daphne, and Apollo's so sad he makes a hat out of the leaves, um, which is a really odd way to, uh, you know, deal with a breakup. But um, that laurel wreath became a part of Apollo's, uh, the cult of Apollo and the, and the mythos there. So they had these games called the Pythian uh, Games, and uh, these were dedicated to Apollo. And when you won the games, you got you got a laurel wreath. Um, Apollo also had an oracle uh, uh, called the called the Pythia. And this oracle would uh, chew on the laurel leaves as while she was prophesying what kind of good or bad omens you were going to have. And if you got a good prophecy, then you were given a laurel wreath as a sign of Apollo's favor. Uh, now, the Romans, uh, we all know the Romans were a bunch of Greek copycats, and they love throwing laurel wreaths on everything. Um, but a lot of our modern words for... Um, we, have a, we have a few modern words that use the word laurel in them, like baccalaureate. Or poet laureate. You know what baccalaureate means? It means a uh, laurel berry, because laurels were a sign of victory, immortality, purity, prosperity, health. It was you're the top dog, man. So that's that's what the Romans did with it. Uh, they immortalized a lot of statues and poets uh, with with the laurel wreaths and paintings. Um, there were a lot of stories with emperors and their laurel wreaths. Uh, uh, sorry, this is this is the this is the poet Virgil uh, from Dante's Inferno, and you know here he is with laurel wreath. Uh, but uh, one of the emperors of Rome, Emperor Tiberius, um, you'd always find him with his laurel wreath on during a thunderstorm because there was this belief that laurels uh, would protect you from thunder and fire. And, uh, I mean, they do have some resistance to, you know, burning, um, but uh, the Romans just thought that they were possessed with um, fiery, heavenly demons. And obviously that would be the uh, that would be the way to ward off any you know, uh, uh, fire and, and uh, lightning. Uh, by the way, uh, fire and lightning prevention is not doTERRA compliant for the uses of uh, laurels. Um, Pliny the Elder also listed a variety of conditions that uh, are also non-compliant, but uh, that would be cured by the laurel leaf oil. We're talking like paralysis, spasms, sciatica, bruises, headaches, ear infections, and rheumatism. Um, there, there was probably a heck of a lot more he could have written down, but he died in that whole Vesuvius thing in 79 AD. Probably should have worn his fireproof um, laurel wreaths. Uh, yeah, here's a here's a little picture of a series with uh, realistic sound effects. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, even in um, in Italy, even today, the laurel wreath is a sign of graduation. And uh, hey, you made it academically. You know, you you not they don't give you any stinking graduation cap in uh, in uh, Italy. Uh, you get a you get a full blown uh, a laurel wreath. And uh, now it's interesting to note that uh, we're not we're not sure if that's due to educated people having more brainstorms and thus are more prone to brain lightning. But that is something up for scholarly scholarly debate. But uh, probably with people who are wearing those uh, those leafy graduation crowns. Uh, yeah, here is a picture of a brainstorm. In case you don't know what those look like. Now there is a Chinese myth about the phases of the moon. Uh, apparently there's this guy, I, I don't quite know how to pronounce his name in all the different Chinese dialects or any of them. It sounds like Wugong, but um, he ticked off some deity and uh, they made him trim back a tree on the moon 
forever. It's kind of like the uh, Greek Sisyphus uh, story about pushing the boulder up a hill, except this guy's got to got to do perpetual pruning. And uh, the tree has changed over the years in the different myths, but uh, in in modern Chinese storytelling, it's a laurel tree. And uh, the name the name for the laurel tree, in, in I think it's Mandarin, is uh, Moon Gui. Like like I mean not literally Moon Gui, but Moon, and then Gui is the Chinese word, and it's tree uh, or some kind of tree with it. Uh, bonus factoid about the uh, laurel tree is that you can kill bugs with it. That's right. You can put it in the uh, uh, bottom of your killing jar here, and it will uh, it'll it'll kill smaller insects. I mean, don't use it on a beetle or anything hardy. They apparently they like smelling like bay leaves, but um, it helps because it reduces mold growth on the bugs, which I didn't realize was a problem in entomology. Uh, so for the discerning entomology-focused uh, serial killer, uh, make sure that you're using a bay leaf uh, under your piece of paper for your kill jar. Uh, bonus, bonus, bonus. Um, the bay leaf is not poisonous to people, contrary to popular belief, uh, but there are other members of the bay leaf family and imposters of the bay leaf family, like mountain laurel and cherry laurel, that are actually poisonous to people. If you uh, zoom in on this thing here, notice... The leaves and fruit of the cherry laurel have cyanolipids, which can resist, resi they'll kill you. So don't use those. They're harmful to livestock, livestock, they're harmful to people. Don't use those things. But but this is this has produced a myth that if you eat the, the, the bay leaf at the bottom of your pot, you're going to die. That's not true. I mean, it is a, it is a leaf. You might choke on it, but you're not going to, you're not going to die. I mean... Don't take my word for it. So finally, let's talk about what you can be doing compliantly with your doTERRA laurel leaf oil. Um, so it has eucalyptol in it, which is one of it's one of its main chemical constituents, and that is a nice smoothing uh, or it's soothing for your skin. You can add it to your moisturizers and and moisten up your skin and soothe it with the laurel leaves. Uh, it's also good at cleansing, so it can cleanse skin. And you can put it with some lemon oil and in a spray bottle with some water and use it as a natural, you know, cleanser for your countertops. Um, you can even drop some in the shower, put a little, put a couple little drops and let it aerate, you know, diffuse up into your shower to promote an ar aroma of confidence, clarity, and courage. Um, and it's also pretty good for an invigorating, soothing massage if you add it to a carrier oil or your, uh, you know, doTERRA, um, you know, massage creams. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, discussion on the laurel leaf. Uh, catch back with you next time. Thanks.